In this quick video, we're going to talk about Rails modules versus concerns and the difference between those and when you should use one or the other. So let's get started. I have a basic Rails app here, nothing fancy, vanilla. Um, I want to show you what a concern looks like. So when you run Rails new, you'll commonly see a concerns folder in your models folder as well as your controllers folder. And those are kind of the, I guess, preemptive patterns the the framework gods who have um, constructed the framework at Rails uh, decided to, you know, incorporate. So concerns are either loved, in my opinion, or hated, not hated, but just not used. In some cases, a lot of people use like service objects or some sort of shareable component that they'll use in their app um, in their own way. And concerns I've seen, I think, at least from the Basecamp crew, are pretty huge. They use them like religiously. So you'll see it in a lot of the models, they'll have a lot of included statements and those are what they're basically doing as far as concerns go. So what is a concern? It's essentially a way to extract functionality outside of the scope of a model or a class in your app. Um, could be a controller, could be a model, um, or some plain old Ruby object where you wanna just extract it away. It's something you're typically gonna re rinse and reuse, so it's a way to dry it up as well. So if you don't know what dry is, it's don't repeat yourself. So it's a way to just essentially write less code but still make it legible and readable uh, for the other developer or your team who's working on the project. And there are some conventions with concerns especially, so um, a common one is just how you name it. And naming things is hard. It's literally hard. It's like the hardest thing I think in programming, besides dates and times maybe, but I could be wrong. But naming one, it's it's at least in the in the world that I've seen, is it's commonly a Apple, uh, uh, suffix, I guess is what it's called. So you might have something like sortable, filterable, validatable, um, pagetable, ser serializable, a lot of uh, bulls, basically. Uh, some, some abide by that. You don't have to, but it is one thing that's kind of obvious when you see it. So that's kind of nice. Um, as far as how you would include one in your app, there's no generator by any means to do so. So you could do Rails generate model or controller. It doesn't work that way. Instead, you'd do it manually. And you'd include a, con a concern just by creating a new file in the concerns directory. You might call it like, I don't know, validateable.rb. And that could be just a, a simple Ruby module. So you just declare it as a validatable, assuming I can type validatable, something like that. Include that in your app. You need to extend active support concern. This is one of the little features. That, so it's integrated into Rails and the framework knows about it. So you'd extend this class of active support. That's one little gotcha that I'm sure you'll miss at some point if you're doing these from scratch. And once you have that, you can do basically whatever reusable functionality you might need in this case. So let's say we have both a user class and an account class, and they both have an email and a password. Maybe there's a team involved. I don't know. But we could do an included statement, which essentially um, I'll get to in a second what that means. But included do, it's a Ruby block inside. You can also just do what you would normally do in your Rails model. In this case, we're going to focus on models. So validates presence of, I can never spell that word, of, and then we can say email. I mean, you could just do validates presence as well. If you're probably more, more familiar with that, validates presence, we'll just do email, password, and then presence, True, something to that effect. I swear I can't spell that word. C S. There. So that, that essentially gets included in your models as you as you have them. I don't have the models at the moment, but we're gonna fake it and say user rb and account rb. These would probably be run by either creating a table if you did on the command line. So something like class of account extends from application record you again this would be automated essentially once you create the model but that would get you the model so user would probably be something like a authentication authentication gem maybe device or something or you roll it yourself okay so with that in installed we have validate 
as our module we can include. So it would essentially be include just like so. So that gives us that logic on both this model and this model. It's as simple as that. That's a concern. So it's, a, it's just a pattern. It doesn't mean anything other than that's a way you can extract logic from your model, which can get big. Um, and it is a convention to kind of put a lot of logic in models if you can. And you can just include it there and be done. And a lot of the stuff, since it's modular, it makes more sense in terms of scaling. So you, there's a lot of benefits to that. So like validations in particular. Concerns, you could put them anywhere. Um, I think obviously the default folder is probably the best spot, but you could put them in another folder and include them uh, in another way. I think this is obviously the simplest, easy solution to do that. Uh, I don't think you even need to really tweak a configuration to do something like that. You could just make sure you include it with the path uh, so it gets auto-loaded in the app folder, essentially. So anything in this folder should theoretically work if it's a new folder. Let's see, the included do block. I wanted to mention that. So the included do block is a special syntax for a Rails concern. It's essentially just a, what you would use in a concern and allows you to define code that can be executed in that module as opposed to in directly in the model. Um, it's just a wrapper for that. So you're able to do it from that space. It doesn't have to rely on the model particular in the host class, which in this case would be either a user or an account model. Let's dive into what modules are. So modules kind of have a similar, you know, look and feel as to a concern, but you wouldn't actually have a concerns directory or anything for those. In fact, these might be something you keep in your lib directory. It's, it's not often you need these, but I mean, in some cases it might make sense. Uh, a lot of use cases I've seen would be to add a formatter type concept to uh, a Ruby class or a other you know string class if you want to manipulate something automatically. Maybe you're doing something in finance and you need a lot of currency conversions or I don't know fractions stuff like that. It gets kind of hairy. But you could make like a date formatter. So I'll make a little date formatter. RB class. This is a plain Ruby module, so date formatter. And we can do a declaration of, let's say, format date. You can pass the date, and this is where you could pass in your string manipulation stuff that's just essentially Ruby. So date RF time. And then you could do like uh, just a basic format that you like. If you go to the Ruby docs, there's a bunch there that you can choose from. So that's like how you format date. You could do a time format. So you could do self format time. And we'll have a time. This one will do an hour, something like that. So usage might be, in this case, maybe you're in your controller. You could go up to your controller. Uh, maybe you have, we'll just use application controller for now. But you might include that module now which is auto-loaded, date formatter. And you're able to then, whatever index you might be on, um, this is hypothetic, uh, so def index, and you might have a date that you want to get the current date. So you could say date formatter, format date, and then date dot today. Simple as that. Same with time, I'm gonna get the current time. I like to use the time class with the zone so it's accurate. There you go. So that would, would give you essentially, you know, the output. Cool. Let's try it in our console, see if it works. So. Boom. So we can do the time. My time zone is central, so time zone dot now. Boom. And I think I misspelled something. Yeah, we need to percent. So we'll reload. There we go. So I wouldn't use that format personally. I think it's 24 hour time. That's essentially it. So hopefully that was useful. This is the kind of key differences. Essentially, you want to use concerns for shared functionality, primarily for sharing code between models and controllers. 
and other classes that have similar functionality. So if you find yourself repeating code, this is a good use case for a concern. Modules would be good for namespacing and utility methods. So this could be suited for creating these methods that encapsulate logic that you're going to rinse and reuse over and over, like that string manipulation kind of concept or math or, uh, I don't know, some sort of date formatting. I don't know, anything like that. Now you can keep these also pretty much anywhere. I, I think I've seen it mostly in the lib directory. You can create a modules directory or something in there if you want to. Uh, it's up to you with that, but um, you can auto, auto load it in the lib or the app directory, I think is, is safe to put. So keep that in mind. You wanna avoid using concerns for utility methods that you might use in modules. So if you have those that don't depend on any type of class, that's included, like the user model or the account model, um, where you would maybe include like um, Ruby methods on those classes, particularly uh, that per talk to the database or something. That doesn't make sense for a module. A focus on keeping concerns focused. So if that makes sense, we will basically want it to be very specific to what it's doing. So if you notice the naming concepts of it, like pageable or um, sortable it should be focused on that current thing and then if you need more logic and you start to see yourself you know adding more to that thing that doesn't really relate you might want to make a new module or a new concern that relates to that specific thing so it's like a single source um, dependency there and of course testing them you want to test them just like anything else while learning the, the framework myself, I brushed these off. I didn't see the value in them, but then I started looking at open source as um, bigger apps um, scale up. You start to see the use cases and you start to see where the discrepancy of repeating yourself really kicks you in the, in the butt. <laughs> so uh, if code is scattered throughout your app and you're finding yourself overusing it, um, it's a definite use case for these types of practices. So. Rails concerns versus modules, which ones should you use? I would use both, to be honest. So it's not really a matter of one better than the other. I think they're both useful. You'll find yourself reaching for these as you start to scale your app more. If you're a brand new app, not much logic. It's not a big deal. But I think if you see the value in extracting things away, uh, make sure you name it right. Um, that's relatable to what you're doing. Like a concern, like we, we talked about, should be focused. That's going to pay dividends in the long run. So... That is it for now. Hopefully this was useful, guys. Um, if you like these videos, these single concept videos, let me know. I know in the, ha in the past I've done like Let's Builds, and those are very long, time-consuming things. I love doing them, but uh, the last one I published honestly got almost no views. So it's kind of like one of those things where well, I don't know if I should do those anymore or not. But we'll see. Um, hopefully they're valuable. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.